Hello everybody, Sandra Delaja here, back to you after so many weeks <clears throat> of talking about this topic, uh, Black African People Caused. I'm going to continue today and uh, we are, you know, <clears throat> we are going to go as many, as long as possible. So here we go. The topic of today that I want to deal with is talking about the African scientists' inventions that we use today. African inventions that we use today. African scientists' inventions that we use today. Now, there are different ways I could approach this topic. But the reason I'm going to be talking about this topic, this particular topic, about the inventions that we use today, is, be so, is because it, it will be, is, these are things that everybody, most people will identify with. So I'm going to be talking about 19th century, 20, 20th century, 21st century African inven inven inventions and scientists. I could talk about the early African discoveries and early African inventions, but those are old things that I've spoken about a little bit in the beginning. I spoke about a little bit of those, but I want to talk about the things that are happening now. So these are going to be <clears throat> scientists and people that are, have, are, have lived in the 1920th and who are living in the 21st century. Okay, here we go. In the 18th to 20th centuries, blacks invented many things that people used throughout the world. Let's take a look at some of them. Okay, air conditioning units. You see, anybody knows air condition? This was invented by black people. Was invented by Frederick Jones on July 12, 1949. This black scientist who received more than 40 patents in refrigeration technology developed an air conditioner and he also invented the air conditioner unit for military hospitals and a portable refrigerator he also invented a refrigerator a black man so everybody uses fridge in their houses and refrigerator you know but they don't know it's a black man that did it, that made it they use the air conditioner but they don't know it's a black man that did it Automatic cooling system invented by Frederick is used in large trucks as well. Okay, the first American wood clock with hourly shimmy was designed by black man Benjamin uh, Banneke in 1753. You know, just like what I have in my office here. <laughs> you know, this was yeah, everybody, almost every house used to have this kind of clock. You know, but it's a black man who designed it. Okay. Auto cut off switch was invented by black man Granville Wood on January 1st, 1839. What is this? This is uh, auto uh, <coughs> cut off switch, you know, so that does it automatically. When things uh, have reached this limit, to put it itself automatically off, switch off, is the one who did it. <laughs> Automatic fishing device, you see, fishing, not just with an automatic fishing device, was invented by another black man, G. Cook, on May 30, 1899. Look at it. Automatic driving, you know, we have auto, uh, mechanical driving and automatic car drive. Okay, automatic gear shift and direction indicator for vehicles were invented by black man. Richard Spikes, on December 6, 1932 and 1906 respectively, those two things, indicator in 1906. So this is automatic, everybody wants to have automatic car right now, it's because of black man. <laughs> baby burger, baby, baby uh, carrier, was designed by black man. Everybody has baby carrier like this, we go about with baby carrier, William Richardson on June 18, 1899. You were surprised, eh? Most things that we use today are discovered by black men. But nobody knows, nobody will tell you. You just use them. A folding bicycle, bi folding bicycle, folding bicycle frame was invented by black man Isaac Johnson on October 10, 1899. Biscuit cutter was invented by Alexander, by black man Alexander Ashburn on November 30, 
the world's first blood banks were created by a black scientist Charles Drew in 1945. You know, blood bank supply uh, drips, yeah, blood drips by a black man. Gamma, gamma electrical cell was invented by a black man, Henry Sams Samson, on July 6, 18, 1971. And that's what we use for our cell phone. Cell phone, gamma electric, electrical cell, cell phone. See, this man invented it. In Sh uh, Shimba Komod, Komod, Komod was designed by <coughs> Black Thomas, my Black man, Thomas Elkin, on January 3, 1897. <laughs> That's it here. <laughs> yep. Close dry machine was created by black man George Sampson on June 6, 1862. Dry dryer, dry machine. <laughs> 14. Cutting rod was this for the for your cutting the house was invented by black man uh, Scratton on November 30, 1889. Cutting rod support was invented by another black man, William Grant, on August 4, 1896. Door, door stop and door knob were invented by black man Osborne Dorsey on December 10, 1878. You know? Door stop and door knob, you know, not using key. But you know, you just press it and it's locked and press it. You know, that's it. It's inside. Mm -hmm. Dust <coughs> dust pan was invented by Lawrence Ray on August 3, 1897. They, <laughs> we used to yeah, in every house. Egg beater, which became the first prototype of a mixer, was invented by black man Willis Johnson on February. 1884. Electric lamp bulb with carbon filament was invented by black man Louis Latimer on March 21, 1882. With carbon inside. Elevator with automatic doors had elevators. Yeah, lift they call it in some places was invented by black man Alexander Miles on October 11, 1867. Eye protector was invented by black man Power, Powell Johnson on November 2, 1880. <laughs> Eye protector for the world welders, welders welding. Fire escape ladder was designed by black scientist Joseph Winters on May 7, 1878. In every house is there. An improved fire extinguisher and automatic sprinkler system, which has been used in American buildings since 1874, were invented by black man Tom Marshall on October the extinguisher. Put off the, uh, he, he invented it. Folding bed and folding chair folding it, divan, were invented by black man Leonard Bailey on July 18, 1899, and jointly with Brody and Sogwa on June 11, 1889, respectively. Fountain pen was invented by black man William Purvis on January 7, 1890, pen. Furniture caster was invented by black man David Fisher on March 14, 1876. <laughs> Gas mask was created by black man Garrett Morgan in 1912. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
electroacoustic microphone was invented by black man James West in 1962. His invention an elect electric microphone is currently used in 90% of modern music industry. <laughs> wow. Golf tea was invented by black man George Grant on December 12, 1899. <laughs> A modern guitar was invented by black rob man uh, Robert Fleming on March 30, 1886. Guitar. The Isabos and uh, one GNZ risk architecture black was invented by black man um, Mark David in, uh, invented the ISA bus, which allows you to connect different devices to your computer, including printers, uh, modems, printers, modems, connection and was also involved in invention of a one gigabyte re re disk processor, disk processor ship in 1981. Airbrush was invented by black leader, black lady leader Newman on November 15, uh, 1896. Anstamp was invented by black man William Purvis on February 27, 1883. A modernized uh, horseshoe was invented by black man James Riggs on March 30, 1885. Ice cream uh, scooper used to make ice cream balls was invented by black man Alfred Krell on, Krell on uh, February 2, 1885. Uh, 97 what you use to, to get your ice cream multi effect evaporation system used in making premium quality sugar by discoloring it this apparatus is used to this day not only in the sugar producing industry but also in production of glue milk soap mm -hmm. and other things it was invented by a black man Norbert Rilek, Rilek, uh, Rilio on December 10, 1845. Insect destroyer gun was invented by a black man, uh, Richard, uh, A. Richard, on February 28, 1899. <laughs> Iron board was designed by, blacks, by black lady Sarah Boone on December 30, 1887. Key, key Shane was invented by a black man Frederick Ludin on January 9, 1894. <laughs> a modern lantern was invented by a black man uh, Michael Harvey on uh, October 19, 1886, 1884. Lone Mauer uh, with a rotor blade was invented by a black man John Burr on May 1989. <laughs> Long sprinkler was designed by uh, black man uh, Jay Smith on May 4, 1897. <laughs> Lemon squeezer was invented by black man John Thomas White on December 8, 1893. A lock, padlock, was in, was in, was an improved version of Chinese primitive lock from 4,000 years ago and became a prototype of modern door locks was invented by black Washington Martin, Martin black man Washington Martin on July 21st 1889 so each the, the modern thing we now see is now the invention of a black man lubricating coupler for engines and uh, mechanism which is still used in trains was invented by black man elijah mccoy on november 15 1895. <laughs> launch box was invented by black man james robinson in 1887. mailbox was invented by black man paul Darwin on october 27 1891. a modern mop was designed by black man Thomas Tewer 
on June 11, 1893. A modernized engine was invented by black man Frederick Jones on June 27, 1939. Modern peanut butter was invented by black man George Washington Carver in 1896. Pencil, sh pencil sharpener was designed by black man John Love, John Love on November 23, 1897. An improved telephone transmitter and railroad multiplex telegram were invented by black man Granville Woods in 1884 and 1887 respectively. Record player arm was invented by black man Joseph Dickinson on January 8, 1819. A high performance refrigerator was invented by black man John Standard on June 14, 1891. This is a high level, fast working, high performance refrigerator. An improved riding saddle was invented by black man William Davis on October 6, 1895. A modern polling pill was invented by uh, black man John Reed in 1864. An improved shampoo headrest was invented by Black Charles Bailiff on October 11, 1898. Spark plug was invented by Black man Edmund Berger on February 2, 1839. An improved straightening comb was invented by Black Madame black woman madame walker in 1905 street sweeper one of the first street sweeper machines was invented by black man charles brooks on march 17 1890 <laughs> thermostat control system for generators was invented by black man frederick jones on february 23 1960. Three color traffic light, red, yellow, green, was designed by Garrett Morgan on November 20, 1923. <laughs> Tricycle, one of the varieties of such a bicycle was invented by black man Matthew Sherry on May 6, 1886. Three D glasses used to watch movies in 3D were invented by black man Kenneth Dunkley in 1985. <laughs> Home security system was invented by black man black lady Marie Van Britten Brown in 1968. Shoe lasting machine was invented by black man Jean. Mazeliga in 1883. The process of using laser to remove cataract was developed by black man, black lady Patricia Bath in 1981. Cataract operation. Mm -hmm. a, a spectrograph invented by black man George uh, Carutha. Caruthers was used by Apollo 16 in 1972 to study UV radiation of the lunar spectrum. Moreover, the spectrograph was made more than 200 photographs, has made more than 200 photographs of the Earth's atmosphere, magnetic fields, and ionosphere. Air humidifier was invented by black man Rufus Stocks in 1968. An X-ray spectro spectrometer used in space exploration uh, explorations was invented by black man George Alcon in 1984. Hmm. Uh, Janik Kopler that connects train wagons was developed by uh, a black man Andrew Baird in 1895 the wagons of the train what connect them together just imagine for a moment that these benefits of civilization that had been introduced by blacks did not exist in our lives in fact many of the things we use 
have been invented by a whole cast of scientists of African descent. Only we haven't heard about it before and never knew their names. And this is just a few. I just chose one particular generation. If I go into history, you will discover that it is overwhelming what black people have done. So don't let anybody put you down or bully you or tell you that black people are cursed or they are inferior or they are behind anybody. No, 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 no. We are a blessing to the world now and forever. Okay. So go and share the message. Let's go and share this message. Share, share, share. Share the message with your friends and family members. Let the word go viral. And if you want to join my mentorship class, go to sundayadelajablog.com slash mentorship. If you want to read my books, you can get them also on the same blog, sundayadelajablog.com slash books. If you want to come to visit us and go through my training, history makers training, go to sundayadelajablog.com as well, slash HMT. If you wish to uh, uh, go with us to Africa to build a new continent, a new Africa, go to my blog, sonadlajablog.com slash Nigeria. So and, uh, let's share the message and we'll go and see the video very soon. And this video will tell you more about what God has done through Africa, Africans and still doing. Peace. Hello guys, it's Jabari here. Africa does not particularly have the best reputation from a global perspective. Most of the continent consists of poverty-stricken nations, disease epidemics, and civil wars. Other parts of the continent consist of primitive tribes who live off the land. Even the most successful nations in Africa are really only comparable to the least successful nations in Europe. People tend to assume that these are all attributes that have perpetually plagued the continent since the dawn of time. So this begs the question, is Africa really a perpetual, dark continent? Have Africans really accomplished nothing more than loincloths and mud huts in the past? Fortunately, the answer to this question is no. The lingering effects of colonialism, slavery, racism, and unnatural borders have negatively impacted the continent and its people since the 1800s. And time is the only remedy to these problems. However, life in Africa prior to European influence thrived and had some surprising achievements that you probably would not expect. Number five, the C-section. The Caesarean section or C-section is a practice that involves the intentional removal of a fetus directly from the uterus of a woman who is unwilling or incapable of a vaginal birth. Most of you probably assume that this is a product of recent times and only possible with the advent of modern medicine with roughly one-third of all live births in the U.S. being carried out by way of C-section, according to the National Center of Disease Control. Others may assume that it was invented by the Romans, and only recently rediscovered by Europeans during the modern era. After all, it does take its name from the Roman ruler Julius Caesar. However, all of these assumptions are incorrect. In fact, there is no evidence that Julius Caesar was even born this way. While C-sections have been documented since Roman times, they were generally done as a last-ditch effort to rescue a fetus from a dead or dying mother without any plans or procedures in place to repair the wound afterwards or save the mother's life. Emperor Jillian, the first ruler of the medieval Chinese kingdom of Chu, was also recorded to have been born by being cut from his mother's body. Surprisingly enough, the people of Uganda have apparently been conducting proper C-sections as we know them today since ancient times. In fact, they were the first people apart from modern Western doctors to be credibly recorded performing successful C-sections. A British doctor and explorer by the name of Robert William Falcon observed this practice with his own eyes in the year 1879. According to the US Library of Medicine, he recorded all of it in his journal, Notes on Labor in Central Africa. In this journal, he noted that banana wine was given to the mother as an anesthesia, while also serving as an antiseptic to sanitize the bodies of the doctors prior to the operation. They would then make a midline incision in the abdomen, cauterizing the wound as the surgery progressed to reduce blood loss. After the fetus was removed, the wound was sealed shut with iron needles and an herbal paste was administered to promote healing. Neighboring states such as the Kingdom of Rwanda were also recorded to have similar practices. Despite the fact that this was recorded nearly a century after the first successful Western C-section, 
He concluded that it had been around for quite some time due to how well developed and widespread the procedures were. Number 4. Female Soldiers Women around the world have experienced a very turbulent history prior to the 20th century. As women in the Western world have gained progressively more rights and equality, military combat remains one of the few predominantly male-only institutions. Women in the United States have only been allowed to join the military with a combat-emphasized MOS, or Military Occupation Specialty, as recently as the year 2016. In West Africa, the case was quite different. The Kingdom of Dahomey, located in what is now the country of Benin, hosted an all-female corps of soldiers. Originally created by King Hawuk Baja as a corps of elephant hunters, they referred to as the Gbeto. Later, preceding King Agaja would convert them into an all-female royal bodyguard unit armed with muskets. In the year 1727, they were utilized in the conquest of the Kingdom of Waida, and over time gained great reverence by the people of the Dahomey Kingdom, who called them Nomintone, or Our Mothers in their native Fon language. The French frequently compared them to the Amazons of Greek legend, but sometimes they referred to as Black Sparta. This is due in part to the fact that many of them were handpicked from a very young age by the king himself and subjected to rigorous training, while others were prisoners or volunteers. From storming Acacia Thorn defenses, to gaining indifference to pain, suffering, or death, and even vowing to never marry and remain virgins for their entire lives. These were the highlights of being a Dahomey Amazon who dedicated their entire lives to being warriors. Number 3. Smallpox Inoculation Smallpox is a disease that is virtually eradicated in most of the world's developed nations and only still exists in the fringes of third world countries. Like the C-section, most of you probably assume that only modern advances in medicine made it possible to grant immunity to the disease. Early instances of smallpox inoculation have been documented in ancient China and India. West Africans not only practice smallpox inoculation independently, but are also the ones credited with teaching it to the West. According to an article published by Harvard University, a preacher by the name of Cotton Mather had an African-born slave whom he called Wendemis. Wendemis belonged to an ethnic group known as the Akan. At the time, these were the same people who controlled the wealthy Ashanti Kingdom in what is now modern-day Ghana. In 1716, he told Cotton Mather about a procedure that was conducted on him and all of the children of his village, in which a small amount of fluid from the diseased skin of an infected individual was applied within a small cut of an uninfected individual. He also claimed that the effects of the disease were significantly less severe when contracted through the skin rather than the air and that immunity would be granted after the recovery. Just six years later, a smallpox outbreak ravaged the city of Boston. Cotton Mather urged local doctors to inoculate their patients, utilizing the method taught to him by Wenzemis. Upon learning that it was taught to him by his slave, most people shied away from it. In the aftermath, over 14% of those who were non-inoculated succumbed to the disease while nearly 98% of those who were inoculated survived. Cotton Mather later received honors for this method and traveled to London in 1725, being elected to the Royal Society, despite the fact that was taught to him by Wenzemis. Dr. William Cornwallis Harris and Dr. Pettit also observed the practice being conducted by the Tigray and Amhara people of Ethiopia during a French scientific mission in the year 1839. Number 2 Overseas Trade We all grew up learning of long-distance trade routes such as the Silk Road in which articles such as silk, spices, and porcelain were introduced to Europe from China and India. Or technological innovations such as gunpowder, the compass, and paper spread throughout Eurasia. When you think of long-distance sea voyages, however, you'll likely think of the period after 1492 when the Triangular Trade or the Colombian Exchange took place. When the Portuguese first began trading with the East African coast in the 16th century, they were surprised to find that the Swahili people were building their own ships and already knew how to use compasses. The ships that they sailed, which they called Mtepe, were of a uniquely indigenous construction. According to an article labeled Perceptions of African Identity published by PBS, these African sailors began trading with Arabians, Indians, and Chinese as early as the year 500 AD. 
This is evidenced by Chinese porcelain being discovered in various coastal towns of East Africa and as far inland as Great Zimbabwe. One such example of just how well established this trade was is documented in an instance in 1414 when a ship was dispatched from Alindi bound for China, housing a gift for the court of the Ming Dynasty. It wasn't just a gift of gold or ivory either, it was a full-grown giraffe. So impressed with the animal, the Chinese emperor would display the animal during imperial functions as a show of his magnificence and his ability to tame such a seemingly mythical beast. A painting of the draft was commissioned by Xing Du, which still exists to this day. This trade was so frequent and extensive that the Swahili language itself is a product of several East African, Arabian, and Hindi languages. Number 1. The Walls of Benin When you think of walls, moats, or ramparts, structures such as medieval English castles and the Great Wall of China likely flood your mind. Africans are usually not even considered in regards to walled cities or any monumental structures at all. However, nothing can be farther from the truth. There are several structures throughout the continent that directly contradict these notions including the Great Zimbabwe, the Kano Walls, and the Churches of Lalibela built by the Shona, Hausa, and Ethiopians respectively. One structure however stands above all of these structures. In fact, it's larger than all other medieval structures including the Great Wall of China. With its construction beginning around the 9th century and ending around the 15th century, the walls of Benin were a series of moats and ramparts that crisscrossed the cities, towns, and royal palaces of the Benin Kingdom, which existed in what is now modern-day Nigeria. In an article published by the New Science by Fred Pierce in the year 1999, he described the walls of Benin as being four times longer than the Great Wall of China and having consumed 100 times more material than the Great Pyramid of Cheops. The walls of Benin were even featured in the 1974 edition of Guinness Book of World Records, where it was labeled as the largest earthworks carried out prior to the mechanical era. In addition to being bombarded by the British in the year 1897, these extensive walls continue to be ravaged by modern urban development in Nigeria. The few sections of it that still do remain are collectively labeled as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In addition to being hidden, erased, or outright denied, most of Africa's achievements have simply vanished due to the fact that most of the continent simply lacked any written language. I feel like that is ultimately the biggest contributing factor towards Africa's seemingly lackluster history in comparison to the rest of the world. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know if you've learned anything new or if there are any other achievements of Sub-Saharan Africa that I could have included in this video. Also guys, I ask if you can please support my goal of doing